What's going on? My name is Mike Gambino, and I'm here with Ken Sayward from Mazda, the design group, correct? That's Southern correct. California? Our Southern California Advanced Design Studio. All right, now tell us, oh, pleasure, by the way. Good to have you here. It's, it's good to be here. Good. <laughs> um, now, from what I heard, you had input, you were part of the design group for the second generation and also on the fourth generation? And the fourth generation car. And the fourth we, generation um, car. My basic role within the design group, I, was, I came into Mazda back in 1990 and I had a big role in the second generation development. Obviously going from the first gen to the second gen was a real challenge. First gen car was so successful, we wanted to make sure that whatever we did on the second gen car, we just improved anything. We didn't take away any of the essence of the first gen car. So the second gen car, what we just try to do is make it a little bit more masculine, make the car appeal a little bit maybe more to male buyers, and also f have more of a, a, a family resemblance to what we were doing with the RX-7 at the time. It's much more voluptuous surfaces, a little more dramatic, a little bit better feel to it, a little bit more curve to the surfaces. So that's what we did on the second gen car. A lot what drove the design of the second gen car was the fact that we had to get the headlights, we had to get away from pop-up headlights because of weight and complexity. So we made the lights, we tried to make the lights as small as possible to mimic the front of the, se of the first gen car. And as we did that, we started working our way back and we ended up redesigning the whole car. Originally the intent was to just do the front end. But we st as we started doing that, we realized, well, we wanted to make the fenders more voluptuous. We wanted to make the door cuts look like an RX-7. So as we developed it, it turned out the program got bigger as the program went on. Now, I recently just got into uh, autocross, so I've been introduced to how large of a fan base the Miata actually has. Oh, absolutely. And I guess quick and nimble or, you know, it's... It's phenomenal. The beauty of the car is it is so lightweight, and we were just talking earlier with somebody else about the dynamics and the handling of the car. It's so lightweight, it doesn't feel underpowered, even though it doesn't have a ton of horsepower, but the car is so great, it's so light, it's tossable, you have a really good time with it, you feel like you're going a lot faster in it than you are, but the car handles good, and it always gives you that feeling of confidence that you can get the car back from whatever angle, slip angles you get on it, however far you get the car out of line, you can always bring the car back, and that's the beauty of the car, and the steering is very precise, the shifting is very precise, it's just an amazing handle car. So from second generation to fourth generation, how hard was it to improve what was already amazing for well, that time going, period. Going from second gen to third gen, obviously the car got a little bigger in the third generation. We based it a little bit more on the RX-8 platform at the time, so the car did grow a little bit in size. Didn't lose any of its dynamics and its handling and its fun to drive characteristics. What you see up here is our 25th anniversary third generation car, and what we've done is we've done it in sole red. We've blacked out the A-pillars, the mirrors. It's kind of a custom. We're only building a hundred of them. Um, and basically you buy the car, you get a watch, you get the special badging. So this is a really special car for us and this will lead into the next generation, fourth generation MX-5. So only a hundred are being distributed within the U.S. or in throughout the, US, the world? In the U.S. In the U.S. Now, um, when will it be hitting stores? Um, uh, dealerships? I'm exactly sure you, that's something maybe we can talk a little bit later about and get some exact numbers and dates. Oh, definitely. On. But the car, basically the idea is you order the car, it gets to deliver it to whatever, you order it online, it gets to deliver whatever dealer you want to take delivery with it. You get a special badge, special plaque badge on the instrument panel, signed, and, and basically it's a very custom, very special edition. Over the years, Maz has always done special edition MX-5s, but I think from the standpoint of what this represents, this is probably the, the most significant special edition we've ever done. And would this be the last model? Compared to, but for the next this gen, will, yeah, this will be the will be the last. The third, this will be the third gen model. This will be the last of it, and then we move on to the fourth okay. gen model, coming in the next year or so. What can we expect? If you can give, if you can spill some info out, I can I can point your attention to the chassis over there. That gives you a great example. If you look at it and you really sight down the chassis, you get a pretty good sense of the proportions of the car. It's going to be very dramatic. Obviously, it's going to in, in, entail all of the qualities of all the generations of MX-5s before it and it's going to improve on a lot of areas as well. It's just going to be 10 times better than it was. Absolutely. It's going to be, it's going to be spectacular. It really is. It's going to be spectacular. And I can't wait to see it when it comes out. Body style is similar or something uh, in the works? I think you'll need to wait to see it. To, uh, yeah, and I'd love, to, I'd love to get your impressions when you do see the car. That's awesome. I used to sell Mazas, so I've seen some of uh, the progression. Oh, really? Yeah, back in mid-2000s. Oh, wow. Very cool. Very cool. So I've seen some progression. In, uh, no, it's going to be a spectacular car. And I can say one thing. It will be lighter than the current car. We're trying to take about 2,000 pounds out of it. 200 pounds, excuse me. Yeah, no, 200 pounds out of it. So it will be a lighter car. 
And again, when you look at the chassis, it's very it's a lot of similarities to the to the second gen and the third or the third gen car. But there's not one part on the chassis that's carry over from the third gen car. It's, it's all new, which is really what's cool about it. That's that just sounds amazing. I can't wait for it to come out and take it and, and, and see it in action. Take it for a drive. And and of course take it for a drive. <laughs> Ken, thank you for your time. Hey, you're quite welcome. All right, I'll it's been a pleasure. Thank you.